All right, good morning, everyone, and thank you, or good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today for our fifth session of Griffins at Home. The idea is to have um, an opportunity for our graduates and alumni and GMRCU community to come together in a time when we're separated and can't be together in person. So we hope that you will enjoy today's session of learning the basics of American Sign Language, or ASL, with Brian Smith and Debbie Lawrence. Brian is a nationally certified interpreter and state registered interpreter. He's been in sign language interpreting for more than 25 years, working in settings of K-12, post-secondary business and medical. His passion is in specializing in medical interpreting. Brian holds his associate's degree from Aloysius College in Crescent, Pennsylvania, and also his bachelor's from GMRCU in business education. And Debbie, who will be our co-host today, is a MN is a Minnesota certified it didn't it didn't come out here Brian certified content expert trainer and she's trained thousands of individuals and her students consistently give her high praise she conducts customized virtual ASL training for local colleges and has designed virtual ASL personalized curriculums to teach traditional and special needs students she brings her passion to train hearing individuals the beautiful language of ASL to open two-way communication between the deaf and hearing people whether you want to learn sign with an infant or adult in your life or are just curious about signing, Debbie says, come on in and put pans up and sign with me. So thank you very much for being with us today and we look forward to starting this session. Thank you, Gianna. Uh, Debbie will be joining us just momentarily as you, as you said in the introduction. She teaches and her uh, school session, she's in uh, the Midwest, her school session is finishing and she's jumping from one computer to the next to be ready to join our session. So she'll be coming in just momentarily. Uh, we met last night. Um, the first thing, I guess, with sign language, and we have some poll questions, which I'll let uh, Debbie, once she comes on, uh, facilitate those. But the first thing is with, uh, I'll talk a little bit about my portion, and then we'll go back to Debbie. Um, there's nobody, I don't think anybody is calling in today. I think everybody is actually listening uh, are watching by video. If you are calling in, I know this session is being recorded. So if you are calling in, you might miss some of the signs because sign language is a visual language, but this session will be recorded. So it'll be available on YouTube at a later time uh, to go back and review. Um, okay. I'm gonna talk a little bit about, um, before we go into sign language really quick, about interpreting uh, versus uh, transliterating. Many people think that they're the same thing with uh, languages and the difference between the two, uh, many people get them confused. Interpreting is taking one language and changing it to another. Um, let me give the definition of transliterating and that'll make it more clear. Transliterating is taking one written language or translation is taking one written language and putting it in another written language. So sign language interpreters are interpreters. We take one language, English, which is written and spoken and, and place that into a writ, uh, manual language or using our hands. Um, so we are interpreting. So many people get that confused. It's just a minor thing. Um, with interpreters um, in the Philadelphia area, I don't know if anybody's noticed the news, which I think mostly everybody joining today is probably from the Philadelphia area. I don't think we have anybody from out of town, but you might have seen interpreters on the news doing sign language and think that interpreter is just not, their facial expression is like way off. They don't have the same tone as like the person who's speaking. What is that about? And the reason that might be is because most recently during the pandemic and other natural disasters, there we're using certified deaf interpreters. So the interpreter that's standing beside, for example, the health secretary or governor here in Pennsylvania, um, there's two interpreters who are primarily doing that type of work. They are deaf and they're looking at an interpreter who's sitting in the audience, hearing the message, signing it to the deaf interpreter. The deaf interpreter takes that and puts it into a more concrete 
uh, strong American Sign Language because they are native users and can make a beautiful uh, rendition of American Sign Language with the facial grammar, which myself as a second language user does not have. Um, certified deaf interpreters also um, are in the, in the Philadelphia area. We have six certified deaf interpreters, which is pretty phenomenal because there's only one other certified deaf interpreter around Pennsylvania. Um, and we have like eight in our state. Um, some states have none, but it's certified interpreters are used in um, with those who maybe are immigrants uh, who are coming to the country learning sign language, American sign language, and still maybe know their native sign language. Also, they're used primarily within medical and mental health settings to be sure of a clear message is given and getting um, a transfer of information, all the nuances of moods and language are conveyed. Uh, the third place is actually in the Philadelphia area. There are two that I know of certified deaf interpreters being used in the K through 12 setting where students are learning language who um, for whatever needs, maybe development, developmental disability or other reason um, are learning sign language. So that gives you a lot of knowledge about CDIs. Many people ask questions about that. Um, and like, why is it different um, with that? Are there any questions about what I've presented so far? Nope. Okay. Well, we'll get back into, um, oh, one other thing I wanted to mention is um, also sign languages, <clears throat> excuse me, used within, um, for lip reading in hospitals as well, occasionally. Um, for example, if a uh, patient is in the ICU and they might have a condition, I can't think of the exact condition, um, I'm gonna just leave that go, but uh, it's where they can't actually um, move their muscles or their limbs or they can't have difficulty with paralysis in their speech, but they have speech and they have language, have cognition, um, they might use a team of deaf and hearing interpreters to do speech reading. So the patient would say, like the medical provider might say, how are you feeling today, John? And he might not be able to vocalize the words, but he would move his lips and the deaf interpreter would lip read what he's saying, sign that to me, and then I would voice it to the staff. So that's a unique way that's being used. And I've been fortunate to be used a couple of times with that. Okay, now let's get on to what we're, we're ready to learn um, about sign language a little bit. Um, just be sure I get it in the right area here. We're gonna practice a little bit um, with the ABCs. Now I know time-wise here, we, we don't have a lot of time, um, but Debbie will be joining, should be joining us, and hopefully there's not been a mix up in time zones. Um, I think we should be good. We've spoken last night. So I sort of stealing some of her thunder, um, but she'll come back and review that. Um, with sign language and American sign language, we use two hands for our, um, I'm sorry, we use one handed alphabet. Uh, we use uh, your dominant hand, whichever hand you would write with or you use for uh, your, most of your chores is a hand that you would be signing with. In England, they use two handed. Um, for the alphabet. So when you're signing to someone, you always want to have your hand, your palm, facing out to them. Oh, let me get on the camera. There we go. Always facing out. So we're going to practice a little bit of the ABCs, and I will show you the ABCs, and then we'll do some um, with names. So you can actually copy along. Um, if you have those that are on, uh, don't see your camera, you're welcome to join us so they can see your hand shapes and, and help you if you need to see the hand shapes a little bit better. We're going to start with A, which is your palm out. Okay. Let me check all those A's. Yep. I see all those A's. Great. Let's go to B. B. All right, C. Now this one is, I'm thinking here. Sometimes you do language and you just think, how do I do it? 
I tend to do it sideways. Mm -hmm. D, take that C and put your finger up. D. All right, you can, uh, Joe, you can touch that. Great, great. E. Great, okay, everybody's done awesome today. Here's the one that a lot of people get mixed up when they're first learning, F. D and F can be confusing. F is a flying fingers. Think of your flying fingers. Your fingers are gonna go flying through the air. I'm gonna go back to D. Let's switch to a D. D. Put your fingers all down. There we go. All right. Great. So you want. Now we're gonna go back to F. Okay, ready? Let's flip the fingers up. Go back to F. So we're gonna go next letter. G. Sideways. It's sideways. Just one. Hand. It's hard on camera here. When you show it. Yeah, it goes a little like that. You don't have to have a tilt or whatever, just this. Yeah, G, it's one left finger out. Yep, you have it, Erica. All right, G, H. I goes up. All right. J, just swipe it down. Anybody, anybody taking CPR? Oh, it says my speaker's not working. Can everybody hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, great. J, if you've taken CPR, you know what that is. That's the mouth swap, the, the, the swipe the mouth, which they don't do anymore. It's a no, new CPR, but that's J. I like to have things rem remind me of how to do the letters. K. Can be a little confusing. You have make a V and put your thumb in between it. All right. I'm struggling here. Okay. And who who was that there that's who just spoke? Nadej. Okay. Yep, you got okay. Is that my pinky won't stay down? Some sometimes people's hands are different. I know my hand, I have difficulty with um the middle finger sometimes, like this getting it moved down, but you got it. I do? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just sideways. Sometimes it's weird with the camera. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it looks a little bit different than in person. So, okay. L. M. Now, here's with M, you put your three fingers flying out. They go straight out. You can also do M with your fingers down. So you can see it M or M. As languages change, and even in sign language, you don't really see this, this type of M anymore. You see it more going out. Um, just as English changes, it morphs. Okay, N. You just take one of those, that one finger and pull it in. Put them out. It's hard to see that. Let me bring it up. See, it's just there, like N. And in your M and your N, you don't do sideways. You don't do it this. You do it out. And let me see. Oh, there we go. O. Mm. P. Your K. Upside down. Uh. Mm hmm. Q, it's your G, upside down. Q, Q. Just one. Uh. Yeah, yeah, good, Q, Q. Mm -hmm. R, your two fingers, cross them. S. Okay. T, take that little thumb. Okay, T. U.
That, that was easy. Everybody followed that one. We are on X. Francesca, welcome. We're just on X here. X. Oh. Y. Z. Hmm? Okay. I know you're probably not going to remember the letters because you just showed them once, but I'm going to go through them again and show them to you. And then we'll uh, practice, do some more practice. Okay, I'm not gonna use my voice this time. I'm gonna turn that off. If you get confused, just give me, if you're familiar with Zoom, just give me the hands up feature if you need help or just talk and we'll, we'll all help out each other. Ready? We're gonna start with A. We're on H. That was a lot. So now we're going to do, I would like to try something. I'm not sure if everybody's pictures, um, is anybody joining on an iPad today? Everybody's on laptops? Correct. Okay, great. So if we're all on laptops, hopefully we should be in the same screen location. So we're going to do like uh, Hollywood squares. You know, I don't know if you remember, remember that game. You're like, okay, oh, got to do the opposite way. So to my um, left on my screen is Mary. Are you on the, Mary? How about if you do start our alphabet and then you could pass it to the person on your left, down, or wherever you'd like to pass it to and we'll do the next letter, okay? And the two people on the end, Francesca and uh, Jen, you guys will get involved too. You'll, we'll all pass it down to you, okay? So we're gonna start with A and we're gonna go around with letters. Let's go with A, ready? I'll start with A and I'm gonna pass down to Sydney. I think they're all different on the screens. Okay, I'm going to pass this on my screen. I'm going to pass to Sydney. Okay, Sydney, go ahead. And who are you passing to? Jill. Okay. And I'll pass to Jonna. <laughs> <laughs> Gianna, who are you passing to? I'm sorry, I was letting someone in. Um, okay. I'm passing to Mary. Okay, Mary, did you do your letter there? Which one? Uh, which one? Uh, we, did? we are on letter E. Oh. Uh, 
I'll give you a. Can you give us a hint, Brian? <laughs> yep. E. Okay. And who are you going to pass to, Mary? I'll pass to Kelsey. Kelsey. And Kelsey has it. This is, instead of putting them like this, you will put it out more. Put it out more. Yep. There we go. Kelsey, uh, who are we passing to? Uh, Susan. Susan, she has her G. We're ready to go. Next. And Sue is passing to. I know it's a pain to get that uh, switched. To who? Kim. Kim. H. H. Okay. Kim is passing to Lucas. Let's go, yep. Lucas. Lucas. Let's go, Lucas. Yep. Okay. Who are you passing to, Lucas? Sorry, uh, I'll pass to Erica. Erica. Jay. Jay, great. Erica is passing to? Uh, everybody around me has already called. Let's go to Jen. Okay, great. And Jen is going to pass to? I'm going to pass to, um, I think Sydney hasn't gone yet. Sydney, okay. Are we on L? We are on L, great. Mm -hmm. right. um, Francesca. We're on M. M as in Mary. M. I'll help you out because you only saw it once. It's the like. Oh. Put your finger. You can put your fingers. Three of them. Three of them. Just leave the other one folded down. Mm -hmm. There you go. Great. Great. M. And you, who would you like to pass to? Um, yet. Did everybody go? I think everybody went. We, we're not. No, we're, no, I never went. Okay, who hasn't went there? Who was that speaking? Nadej. Uh, okay, okay. passing to Nadej. Okay, this should be easy because we've got this one with the M's flying out, the fingers going out. And what do we do for the next one? Oh, this is, is this, this one? N, 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 N. Oh, that's the first letter in your name. So there you go. N. <laughs> Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Okay, everybody did. So I'll finish up here. We'll do it one more time. O, P, Q, oh, I'm R, S, T, U, E, W, X, Y, Z. That's the basic of the alphabet. So I know it's just a taste of it. Um, I'm not sure why. Um, actually, I just got a text from Debbie. She's going to be joining us. Uh, I guess her student must need some tutoring or some unexpected tutoring or something. So she'll be joining us momentarily. She'll be popping up on this screen. Um, so that's the, the alphabet. So we'll be ready to impress Debbie when she joins us for the session. Um, so we got the letters of the alphabet. Um, when I'll give you a little bit about deaf culture. It's really deaf culture in five minutes or less. Many hearing people, and I use the word hearing meaning those who are not deaf. That's how we refer to um, folks who have the ability to hear or are hard of hearing, they have hard of hearing or, or deaf. Deaf, the term deaf ref, is the term is preferred to be used instead of, you might see hearing impaired. That gives an analogy of, okay, well they have something wrong with them that needs to be fixed. So the preferred term is deaf or hard of hearing if somebody um, mm -hmm. has lost their hearing and doesn't use sign language as their main mode. So when two people who are deaf meet, um, they would actually, suppose I'm at the bus stop and I see somebody who's deaf and I'm deaf, I might say, hi, my name is, I would say, my name is, and I would, that means like what, or many people say the word is, but 
that's an English word. It's really not used in American Sign Language. And I would say, my name is My name is Brian. What's your name? Or in sign, it would be your name what? And they would tell me their name. And I'm say, oh. Um, then I might say some information about myself, like I'm from Pennsylvania. Where are you from? And they would tell me where they're from and their affiliation to the deaf community. Um, for example, um, My name is Joe. I'm from Philadelphia. Oh, Philadelphia. I have a friend that lives in I have a friend that lives in Philadelphia. Oh, really? And then you just strike up a conversation. Most hearing people, you meet them, say hello, hi, whatever, and you go on your way, you never know their name. But with deaf people, because it's a really um, smaller language group, you tend to do introductions that way, saying your name and your um and you, where you're from and something about yourself. Like um, they use what's called name signs, which are, it's like I would say my name, Brian, but how would you say that name if you can't pronounce it? So they use name signs. Like for example, my name sign is this. And name signs are actually given to you by a deaf person from the deaf community. Um, let me text back Debbie here. Um, uh, So the name sign is always given by a deaf person in the deaf community. If you invent your own name sign, it's usually not really kosher. It's not the correct thing to do. Uh, it might be something about your physical attributes, like uh, just looking at Kelsey. Kelsey might be K, like her hair. Or um, uh, I think Mary has glasses, so it might be uh, Mary because she has glasses. And I see Kim has glasses, so it might be something with an M by your glasses and Sue has glasses. Um, so that's how you would recognize somebody in, in a culturally deaf community with a name sign. Um, let me see, that's like a little bit about name signs, about the ASL, ABCs. I'm gonna practice now. I know we're getting a little short on time here, but I wanna show um, some examples of introductions. And this time I might not be using my voice. I'm not gonna use my voice the first time and then I'll use my voice a second time. So um, this scenario might be that I am meeting somebody at the store who's deaf or who's signing. And um, I might say, and this is using the, when you're talking with somebody who signs, like, excuse me, excuse me. And this is sort of like, it's not like, let me get it on the screen better. Like, waving and it's it, it's a way to get their attention it's not a rude thing with hearing people you would think oh that's rude just trying to wave to get their attention but because deaf people are visual it's okay and acceptable um so it's like i see you sign what's your name i don't know if you're able to see i'm going to try to be closer but you see my eyes i'm going to take my glasses off so i'm going to really be blind you see the eye changes, the eyebrows up and down. What? What's your name? See how they're down? What? They go up. That's facial grammar. And sign language uses the face a lot, which right now, as you might have heard, with masks, it's sometimes difficult to communicate with deaf or hard of hearing people because you're missing half the language. If, if you sent a text and you had no, well, texts don't have punctuation. But if you're sending a sentence or an email without any punctuation, it's hard to know the uh, tone and intent of the message. So facial grammar is really important uh, within sign language. Um, some basic signs I'd like to teach um, is all the, some of the concepts behind them, all the male signs are above the nose. So up here, the female signs are below the nose. So mom, you can copy if you'd like. Mom, it's it's open five hand. Mom, dad, it's up on your head. Dad, 
grandmom. It's like a sh out, out from your chin, out, out. Grandfather is head with a five, out, out. Aunt is an A. Just shake it. Uncle at the top. Does anyone want to take a guess what niece or nephew would be, where they'd be at? I mean, it's pretty self obvious now. Who's up here and who's down here? Niece, nephew, um, aunt, uncle, niece, nephew, cousin, 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 depending. Um, let me see. Is there anybody I missed in family relations? Brother, sister. Oh. How could I forget brother, sister? That's like the one, like I, I should remember that one. Okay, here's the sign for boy. It's like a ball cap. Here's the sign for girl. So brother is boy. Can't really see, can't see, can't see my hand already. Boy. Um, let me move, okay, boy. It's two G's on top of each other. This is the sign for right. But also when you combine the two signs, it says boy right is brother, girl right is sister. So boy right, oh, can't see it, is brother, sister is girl. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't show you the sign for girl. Girl is an A, shake it on the side of the chin. Yes. Sister. So boy, sister, Bro brother, sister. Thank you for reminding me of that. That was a little uh, oversight. Okay, brother, sister. I see that Debbie has joined us now. It's now 1238 in Pennsylvania. Um, she is going to take over now. And uh, we've actually, I've taught the ABCs and we went around and did sort of like Hollywood squares around the screen. We've, I've talked about interpreting versus transliterating. Um, I've shown some signs, boy, girl, brother, sister, mother, father, um, the relation. So if you wanna wrap up here, Debbie, give you a little synopsis of what you have to say and we will um, continue. So have you done introductions? Oh, not to your style, my style, but not your style. So go ahead. Okay, so they know they know their names. We didn't <laughs> practice our names, but we practiced the ABCs twice. So we well, I see. Speak. I see Jasmine shaking her head. No. <laughs> Did he teach you no? I didn't teach no and yes. I should have okay. changed. See, okay. I'm, I'm out of the job now. I should just log off. <laughs> Stay there. Okay. Everyone, hi. This is no, it's a three hand shape and you're gonna open and close it. And you're gonna turn your head at the same time saying no. This is your head and this is your head. This is a sign for yes, this is a sign, but we always had to add like Brian said grammatical markers. So you have to go up and down with your head. This is yes. And put a nice smile with it, yes. Okay, that's a Jill. Yes, okay. So no, yes. So did you understand, Brian? Did you see that? My, well, finger, uh, did. <laughs> my finger did like this, a flick up. And I put it to the side of my head and I flicked it up and I jumped up. It's like, I understand or I understood that. It's like the light bulb just came on, okay? So if you don't understand something, so you do like, don't understand, or no, or yes. Okay, so we're gonna practice right quick. How many, how many minutes do I have? It's now 12.41, we're finished at 12.45. <laughs> okay, all right, so you didn't do introductions, right? No, we didn't get to do that. Okay. So what happens if you meet a deaf person, say in a, grocery, in a grocery store, and you're just learning some signs? So do you stand there and say, 
or do you like stare at them because you're signing with somebody? No, you walk up, you say, hi, come on, hi. I, stick yourself in the chest, I, learning. So you're taking information from a book and you're putting it in your head. So you're learning A S L. A S like you're socking somebody. L. Just don't hit anybody. A S L. So I'm learning. Come on. I learning A S L. My, oh, you're getting brave. My name. And you're going to finger spell your name. We'll start with Sydney. S Y D, pointer up. Uh, N N E Y. Okay. We jump to Mary. M. A, Aura, Y. I'll jump to Kim. My name, K, I, M. Very good, Kim. Okay. I'll jump over to Jill. My name, J, I L L. No, 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 close the safety pin. L L. Slide out. Do it again, Jill. J I L L. Don't go in, go out. J I L L. There you go. You just did the lecture slide. Woo! All right, Erica. My Name, E, R, I, K, A. Oh, you guys are good. Brian, you must have practiced with them a little bit. All right, I have Lucas. Okay. Hi. My name, L, U, C, A, S. All right, I should have had you guys in my class just before you. Okay, uh, Kelsey, did I say it right? My name, K E L S E Y. All right, Jasmine, you got a long one. All right, <laughs> hi, <laughs> hi. My name, come on, you guys, you got to help J Jasmine here. J A S. M I N E. Come on, let's applaud her. That was a long name. <laughs> oh, uh, Francesca? Oh, you got her beat, honey. But you have some double letters here. Okay, let's go, you guys. Let's help her out. My name. Tilt your screen down just a little bit so I can see your hands, okay? Francesca, tilt your screen down a little bit. Your screen? Okay. There you go. Okay. My, my, you're good. My name. Oh, you guys like to do a little doggy pat. In sign language, you got to touch yourself. Put your, slap your hand on your chest. My, my, it's mine. No, yours. No, it's mine. Okay. My name is F. R. A. N C H E S S slide out A no not in out A okay let's do this again one more time F R A N C H E S S A. Woohoo! 
okay, very good. All right, we have Jen. Okay, hi. Okay. My name is Jay. There she goes, you got an attitude. E, N, N. Okay, don't go way off the keyboard. We gotta pull that hand back in there, okay? Come on, let's do it again. J, E, N, N. Very good, all right. Who we have? You have to pronounce your name, so I don't mess it up. N A D J N A D E J E. Okay. Nadej. Nadej. Okay. Nah, Nadej. Nadej. Correct. Okay. Okay. Which Which African country are you from? Neither. Neither. You're from the mm -hmm. island. I'm of French and uh, European descent. Black okay. and European. All right. Let's spell your name. Hello. Okay. Hello. N. 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 Okay, let's N. do my N again. Oh God, let me start N. over. This way. Mm -hmm. A. No, not up. Like this. No, not like that. Like this. All right, you want to do it again? Yes, I would. <laughs> okay, here we go. So my, my name, name. Okay, it's in. I have to watch my ends. I see. Uh, I'm here. Well, you somewhere. have two choices. You can do it straight out if that's easier for you, or you can okay. do tuck. Okay, so straight N. out. Yes, yeah, N. A. Don't turn it. Just keep it straight the way you have. N A. N A. N A. N A. You want to turn up. You messed up my bicep. N. <laughs> okay. N. A. A. Okay. D. Uh, D. E. J. E. Okay. Grab it in. Give it a good grab in. There you go. E. All right. Okay. Now I'm going to move over to, is that Renade? Renad? It's Renaud. Renaud, okay. All right. I don't mess up people's name because I tell you I can mess my name up. All right. Thank you. Um, okay. Hello. Do it again. Pointer, there's pointer. There you go. All right. So am I missing anyone or do I have everybody? Okay. Have everyone? Okay. So now here's how you, you finish. So you just introduce yourself. And they're going to say, they're going to introduce themselves. So they'll say, hi, my name is D-E-B-B-I-E. -B -B -E. I'm doing quick because a time interest, okay? And then your closing is nice. Come on, slide your hand, of course, from the heel, from the heel to your tip of your finger. Nice to meet you. So here you are, here I am. We just have met each other. And you'll say, nice to meet you. Also, so it's a wide handshake going back and forth. But you're not finished in deaf culture. That's not the end of it. You have to say, see you later. See you around or bye bye. So which is your choice? Okay. See you later. See you around. Jill, you, it's this way. See you around. There you go. See you later. Or bye bye. Okay, so which one you want to tell me and Gianna and Brian? See you what? All right, see you later. See you around. Sydney, see you later. Mary, bye bye. Kim. See you later, Lucas. See you later, 
Kelsey. Jasmine. All right. Francesca. All right. Jin. Jen. See you later. Nigel. See you around. Renat. See you later. Okay. I think we made it just in time. Is there any mm -hmm. wrapping up thoughts that Debbie you want to add um, about anything any of our, our polls? We didn't we didn't really go through the polls. I left that for you. That might be something that we could close with. Okay. Um, um, our two polls and Gianna has them already ready to go for us to send up for everybody. Okay. So um, if everyone can go to your poll button, you see, did you enjoy today's presentation? Please say yes or no. Okay. Um, do you have any deaf person in your life? Yes or no? Okay. Can I see the hands of those who actually have a deaf person in their life? Oh, it's quite a few have, have, um, okay. So Kelsey, you have one? Uh, yeah, my roommate, both of his parents are deaf, and we just moved in recently, so. Okay, so you really want to learn some sign language. So yeah. now you can at least say, hi, my name is, okay, nice <laughs> to meet you. Don't forget those important yep. deaf culture. Who else has a deaf person in their life, whether it's a neighbor, a co-worker, anyone else? Okay, all right. Well, did you enjoy this for the short time that we had together? Okay, thank you. You all did a wonderful job. It was nice to meet you. Yep. Thank and this you. was a short taste of uh, sign language. It's a really quick session. Um, but if you're interested, there's other opportunities. Um, so for uh, Gianna, we'll send out some of resources with some review of what we talked about, the ABCs and some things like that um, to you so you can catch up and maybe we can do another session later. And I thank Gianna um, and, and uh, Gwyneth for the lunch and learn. So I hope you learned at least your name today in this short session. And I know time's precious, so we'll get off here. Thank you so much, Gianna, and thank all the attendees. Thank you, thank you Brian you. and Debbie. Thank you. It was we, so nice to have you with us and thank you for showing us a little bit about ASL. And thank you everyone for joining us. If you're interested, we have another session coming up next week. It's managing burnout and compassion fatigue during this time of COVID. So please feel free to register for that. And today's session will be posted on our, on our Griffins at Home webpage where you registered for today's event. In maybe about 24 to 48 hours, it will get posted. So if you'd like to revisit and if you would like to see a copy of the handouts, we can have them there. And um, you know, we thank you for joining us today. Question. Yes. How can we get in touch with either Debbie or Brian? Is that possible? Yeah, Debbie uh, has, there should be a, a contact page here where she'll have to pull that up so it'll be on the slide here. Mm -hmm. No, I, I don't have it on this computer. I switched computers. computers. Yeah. Okay. But you know what? It'll be on the information when it comes to them. But you can go to my website, it's www.easy. E A S Y signing M N for Minnesota dot com. Oh, Debbie, you're gonna have to give me that again. Can you send it, say it again, Debbie. I will put that in the comments and the co comment right. E Easy. E A S Y. Yes. Signing S I G N I N G. M N dot com. Debbie? Yes. Quick question for you. Which yes. of the African country do you come from? Since you had asked me which one did I come from, I was asking you. Um, you know, to be honest, I really don't know my full roots um, oh. from, from either parent, seriously, from either parent. Um, but I work a lot in African countries. Right now, I'm working in the country of Zambia. Um, and I'm looking to build a school there. So oh, that's excellent. Maybe you all will come and join me. 
Why not? Is that why you asked me? Your skills there. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is great. Is that why you asked me whether I was from one of the uh, African yes. country? Yes. No. Uh -huh. No. I've been to Africa, but I'm not. I was not born on, on the continent at all. Okay. Are there any other questions before we wrap up? I did send out those contact information, should have kept everybody in their comments in the chat okay. section, I believe. All right. Question, actually, do you guys take special care of your hands? Or are, you, do you, are you worried you know, about being injured or anything? So, you know, so that would hamper your work? Um, there are some signers that do. Um, Ensure the hands. Oh, wow. Yeah. I yeah. being, a, Jill, I being a sign language interpreter, when you interpret a lot or use sign language, you sort of learn the, that your hands might not be like other people's hands. So if you do this movement or whatever, it might hurt. So you, get, you do it in a comfortable way. But um, some people, some interpreters do have their hands insured. Um, I don't, but um, it is just like a tool. It's a, you know, if you yeah. lose your hands, you're pretty pretty much stuck. So, um, yeah, you, you, some people, some interpreters do do hand exercises, so they're more nimble. Um, I don't. More so myself, I do mental self care because sometimes when you're working as an interpreter, which I do, and Debbie's an instructor, um, you lose you like compassion fatigue that's coming up, Gianna, um, next week. You're in situations, and it's like I just need like a mental come down. So I do that instead of hand therapy. Um, just after a job, I de decompress and um, remember that I'm just the conveyor of information. It's not coming from me. Even though it was stressful, I did the best that I could in, the, in that job. You should join us next week, Brian, if you're able. I should. I, <laughs> and that is, when is that again? You said it's Thursday? It's um, Wednesday, July 16th from 12 to 1230. 12 to 1230. I have written down. Well, shit. And I just pulled up my website if so you could just see. And these oh. are some of my students of all ages. I teach all ages. Oh. So these are two grand props who are learning to sign. And this was a class that just finished. Uh -huh. well, are you going to teach? Will you be teaching sign language in Africa once you open your school, or is it going to be a regular school with sign no, language being taught? No, this is school for deaf people. Okay. Yeah. In the in the time of COVID, I'm curious: is there any concern about? There's a lot of signs that like touch your face and stuff like that. Like, is there um, any concerns about? Just wash your hands constantly. <laughs> um, for me, as an interpreter, you know. Um, you know, everybody's like concerned about what, touching their face and when it first started, not that I just gotten lax, but I, you know, I wear a mask whenever, I do a lot of medical work, but I wear a mask, but um, I'm being more conscious of, you know, touching my face, but there are so many signs that you have to, it's body language and not so much specifically for those who are just deaf, but that's an issue, but it's more so for those who are deaf blind. Because those who are deaf blind, um, they're already, lacking information and have to get it through an interpreter. But when an interpreter is working with a deaf blind people, most of the time it's, um, if they're close vision, you might not be touching them with the hand over hand. But when you are interpreting for deaf blind, you're doing hand over hand. So you just, you might have a face shield if they're totally deaf blind, you'd have your mask and your face shield because they could not totally see if they're totally deaf blind. If they're lower vision, you might have just the face shield so that they could see your um, lips and you would sign um, in front of you and maybe make your signing space a little bit smaller. But um, it, is, it is a part of the language and we've sort of gotten used to it. And your hands are chapped with sanitizer so many times during the day. That's a good question. All right. Did you teach in this time for COVID and pain? Oh, that's a good one. I didn't teach that. I should have known these things. This is the sign for COVID. Put your hands up. It's like a... It would be your non-dominant, not your, your, um, your hand that you don't write with is up. And your dominant hand, the hand that you write with is just like behind it with like another, like a fist like this, but put it sideways. And then you come up and make it like the sun going up and down. It's like the, the virus with the uh, 
sticking out, the prong sticking out, you see the picture of it? COVID, COVID. The sign for pain, I'll show you that, is, I'll let Debbie show that, but it's being shown wherever the pain is. If it's a pain in the neck, um, you have a pain in your, sharp pain in your chest, I have a headache, um, wherever it's just, you're pushing your two fingers together and showing with your face, how bad is your pain? Is it really bad? Like, or is it? And I do children. So children use, because they're learning dexterity, a lot of times younger children would use the whole hand, number five hand, and they'll do like this. And they may be like that around their nose, let you know they got a wheel stuck up in their nose, okay? Or, or they hit their knee, got an owie, a boo-boo. Okay, so children would give you a modification because they're still developing their hand coordination. And as they get older, you might see a double hand, you know, like this for pain. And they'll do it do motion more rapidly. But as, you, as you're teaching, as an adult, you'll do pain. Oh, you pain, you're gonna owie, ooh, where's it hurt? You're too pain, you know what I'm saying? Your eye hurt. You got a boo-boo on your knee. You know, that bad, bad. Did you introduce Merv? Oh, I, I am sitting right here. This is my friend Merv. He came uh -huh. to make an appearance. So that, I'm gonna spell his name. Can we all spell his name? Ready? He's an easy one. Is it good? So yeah, he made an appearance today. He's gonna okay. fly away. All right. We're saying thank you, thank you, thank you. And you guys would say, welcome. Welcome. I'll do it with the left hand. Welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks.